Here's a quick look on Esther's so through some visuals into your studying. Esters, this is the ester here. Remember, esters are the combination of acids, alkanoic acids. We write the acid first when we write an equation. Acid plus the alcohol, acid plus alcohol, giving you the ester and water. This process is called esterification. Terrification. For esterification to happen, you need concentrated sulfuric acid and you need to throw some heat on them. But how do we name an ester? We name an ester using the alcohol part first. So you see in three carbons in the alcohol part. So that's prop propanol. So we're gonna put propyl. Simple like that. Propyl. Wait, how do you spell propyl, boy? While. And then we put the acid part after. So two. So that's ethanoic acid. So we'll just put ethanoate. And that's it. Alcohol part first. Acid part comes in in the ray propyl ethanoid so you notice that the structural formula do has the acid part first then the alcohol but the name has the alcohol then the acid that's just like a big thing just make sure you know that little problem there if they jump out and ask you why do we have concentrated sulfuric acid there are two reasons one is a catalyst speeds up the reaction blah 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 the next one is that the concentrated sulfuric acid takes the water out of the sul um, situation as soon as they make water concentrated sulfuric acid eats that up that's all you need to say removes h2o that's concentrated sulfuric acid we use that to remove water all the time it removes the h2o from the reaction and all of a sudden we want to make more h2o these two will say okay there's less h2o let's make some more so it starts to favor the forward arrow remember this is a reversible reaction when you see two arrows like that but if you remove the water from it you kind of decrease the um, propensity of the equation to want to go this direction it wants to make more water to balance off you know so by taking down the concentration of water okay I think I elaborate on this more enough you just need to say removes water so it favors the forward reaction and if you are asked about what is the functional group this is the functional group man bam bam dun 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 double bond to the remember esther smells sweet and fruity and we get them in fruits and fatty acids and um glycerol what else do you need to know about esters well you need to know about the hydrolysis of esters and well this is basically how we form esters but you just write the reaction in the other direction so you're taking the ester and you're adding back the water and you're going to get back the ethanoic acid and the propanol, propanol or the whatever your acid and your alcohol was from before so this is acidic hydrolysis acid hydrolysis because this will happen in the presence of H plus ions so you want to use dilute sulfuric acid or dilute um, hydrochloric acid or dilute acid here to let this happen and this one this one is an alkaline hyd hydrolysis you notice the presence of an alkali sodium hydroxide and you'll get the same thing except in this situation here you will not end up with the acid you'll end up with the salt of the acid chukuna all right c-h-3-c-o-o-n-a sodium ethanoid right so that's the hydrolysis that's it basically there that's what you need to take away from it the sodium or if it was potassium will go and make a salt instead of just the raw acid you get a salt one more thing about alkaline hydrolysis you see i removed the acid hydrolysis because alka alkaline hydrolysis when we do this with really long chain molecules it's called saponification and also known as making soap we make soap this this will this okay let me show you so a large ester molecule a really long one long chain ester molecule is going to join up with the sodium hydroxide or it could be potassium hydroxide as well and bam we are going to get soap which is basically a salt of this a salt of the um acid that made this ester right so we're going to get a salt of the acid that made this ester so it's going to be a long chain and then sodium at the end that is what makes a soap a soap because you have a long chain and then sodium at the end sodium is doing wonderful things there and then you have the long chain here so you have one part of it that likes the grease or the whatever you're trying to get rid of with the soup and you have one part which likes the water 
Oh yeah, you have a pull apart and a non pull apart and it just pulls it up. Alright, so you could go and research soup, it's in some, some interesting stuff. But what you need to know is that, yeah, the acid out of this long chain ester molecule is going to join up with the sodium here just like this. But you'll have longer um, chains to make soup and the byproduct and glycerol, or uh, which is just a, a type of alcohol. But you'll have two, you'll have three OH groups in this. Now that we mentioned soap, let me just talk about this in your syllabus one time. Soapy detergents, soap plus this detergents. These are renewable, these are non renewable. These ones have little ladder, these ones have, pl these have plenty ladder and foam up and thing. These, we got these from boil, um, saponification, right? Boiling the fats, thing, thing, thing with sodium hydroxide. We can get, we'll get scum from these if we have hard water. They are biodegradable, break down by bacteria and stuff in the environment and they contain no phosphates so generally these will be looking better on the overall outlook these surplus detergents they form plenty ladder which is which is what people like right but it's formed from petroleum which is a non-renewable resource we generally call this one synthetic although both, we made both of them right but this one is more synthetic because this came from animal fats this came from petroleum all right they just call this one synthetic right but that could be technical anyhow so foam the non-biodegradable but these also contain phosphates and you know phosphates phos foam will first of all foam foam will collect on your waterways and block sunlight from reaching down and then phosphates could cause eutrophication when you know plants and algae love phosphates so they bloom under the under this when you soap you, you run off your soap into the into the drain into the um, waterways into the river streams and they get hit with that soap, it's like food, it's like fertilizer for them with that phosphate. So the algae especially will bloom and that rapid growth of algae could block up your stream and cause problems to the whole ecosystem and block off sunlight from reaching down and eutrophication. Bad. Alright, so that's what you need to know for these things. Alright, so that's it for Esther's day. I think we can roll out with that.